Hello and welcome to Down the Vent. Today we're going to be dropping in, killing our friends, and then dancing about it in Monopoly Fortnite Edition. Let's check it out. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at how to play Monopoly Fortnite Edition. So here I have the game set up for four players. Um, each player starts with 15 hit points here, which are these little green tokens in the middle of the board. So they'll take 15 of those, put them in front of them. They'll choose a character, uh, like all the different uh, skins that are from Fortnite. There's lots of them in the game. And this game does go up to seven players, but um, that's probably because you're just limited by the hit points. So if you wanted to play with more people, if you just have some way to keep track of hit points, like pennies or anything, you could probably add more people in because, as you can see, there are a ton of different characters that are uh, included with the game, which is awesome because there's a lot of different skins that people like. So, um, After you have all chosen your character, have your hit points, you'll put all the remaining hit points in the middle of the board. You'll go ahead and set up um, the location cards in front of each of their locations. And then you're going to roll the dice to see who gets to go first. Uh, you just roll the, the one number die, and whoever rolls highest will actually get to drop in first and choose where they want to go. And then you go around clockwise around the table. Everyone else gets to place where they want to drop after that. And two people cannot drop to the same location. Um, then you'll shuffle the storm cards and put those in the board here. And shuffle the loot chest cards and put those there. And then after that, you're ready to go. So on your turn, you'll go ahead and take both dice and just give them a roll. And then uh, do what the dice say. So we'll say that the green uh, tomato guy will go first. So he'll get to move six spots. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he gets to shoot someone, so he's going to shoot uh, the teddy bear girl for one damage, and she'll just put her health back in the middle of the pile. Um, so now she's down to 14, a little bit closer to being dead. It is important to note that you can never go over uh, 15 hit points in the game. So, as you can see, there's a number die, and then there's a different die that has symbols on it. So the first one is the, uh, is that symbol right there, the crosshairs. When you roll that, you get to choose someone on the same side of the board as you and deal one damage to them. If you're on the corner, you can choose either side of the board, so he only had one choice. If you roll a brick, you actually get to take a wall card, and then you would put it over one of the spots that you walked over that turn, and someone would have to stop there uh, the next time they run into it to, uh, to break the wall down, and then they can't go past that spot, so someone would eventually maybe land on this trap and have to take an extra damage because you built your wall there. The next one is heal, and that just lets you heal for two hit points. And then there is boogie bomb. Boogie bomb destroys every wall on the board, and then every other player besides you has to lose one hit point. And that is it. So there are four different symbols there. So we'll go ahead and go on the next person's turn. We'll go with the bear. And she got two, and the... Uh, crosshair symbol. So she'll move two. She landed on retail row. So when you land on a location and the card's still there, you can take it for free and put it in front of you. And each card tells you what happens now when someone lands on it. So it says when another player lands on this location, they must pay two hit points to the bank. So now it's dangerous for anyone to go to retail row because, you know, I'm holding it. And then I get to snipe someone, so I'm going to snipe back who just hit me. And that's it. We'll move on to the next person's turn. Four and a brick. One, two, three, four. So I landed on a trap. Um, so I'm going to lose a hit point for the trap. And then I'm going to place a brick at Salty Springs because I walked over it. All right. Next person's turn. Four. And the sniper shot. So I'll go ahead and shoot this guy before I move. Make him lose a hit point. And then move four. One, two, three, four. Aha! I got a loot chest. Sweet. So, I got a bouncer trap. It's a one-time use. Move any player up to four spaces forward or backward. They must complete the action of that space where they land. So, I'm going to put that in front of me, and at any time on my turn, I can decide to use this and move someone backwards or forward four spaces and make them pay the consequences. Uh, and then we'll go back to the other person's turn. The first player's turn again here. So, let's see here. I got a bandage and five. So, I'm going to move first. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to pick up Lonely Lodge. And then I'll heal for two. I was only missing one hit point, so I'm only going to actually heal for one. So there are a couple other spaces on the board besides locations, as you can see. There's a loot chest, which lets you draw loot chest cards. 
There are campfires, which heal you for one, and there are traps, which actually make you lose one hit point. Um, there's go to jail, which sends you to jail, where you have to try to roll to get out, or you can pay two hit points to get out. There's free parking, which does nothing. It's just a free space on the board that's safe. And then there's go. Um, when someone reaches go, or passes go, they will get two hit points back, and then they'll reveal a storm card. So every time someone passes go, a storm card is going to be revealed. It says, place this card face down on the go-to-jail space. Players no longer go to jail when they land on the space. So, the storm has spread to that square on the board. Now, if someone lands on that space, they'll actually lose two hit points. So, it kind of makes it... It, it, it starts to speed up the game as the storm starts to spread across the board more, which is a really cool um, effect, effect there. Um, the other thing to note is that if you ever die, because if, if you run out of hit points, you're dead, and your goal in this game is to be the last person alive. You want to kill all your, your friends you're playing with and be the only person left. So say this guy dies, he's out of the game, so remove his character, he puts all of his hit points back in the middle, and then any locations that he owned will actually get flipped up and now they're worse, because now the storm is spread there as well. And when you land there, you don't have to pay three hit points to the bank instead of the two when he owned it. So um, it makes everything a little bit difficult. So that's pretty much the game, though. Um, the only other thing to note is that if you owned both of a color's locations and you ever land on them, um, you would actually gain two hit points back because you, you control both of them. Um, it doesn't affect the other player's zone in any other different way. They would still lose the same amount of hit points. It just is like an, another extra safe space, or an extra heal space for you, because besides the campfires. But that's pretty much the game. So um, let's go ahead and head up and see what I think about Monopoly Fortnite. Okay, so what do I think of Fortnite Monopoly, or Monopoly Fortnite Edition? Um, it, it's not really Monopoly. I mean, you can trade the locations with each other on your turn. Um... But I don't know why you would. Uh, the, when we played this, we never traded, and it only lasts about 25 minutes. The games did anyways. Um, it goes pretty quick, and there's no reason. That you, you don't want to really... I mean, you could try to ally with someone, but there's nothing holding them to that alliance, so they can just stab you on the back as soon as they're, they're ready to, I guess. Um, and the game's quick enough that it doesn't feel bad either so when you get knocked out you just choose someone to root for and kind of like yeah 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 get them back or something you know it's just it goes fast enough that it doesn't matter um it's a fun filler game i actually really enjoyed it um it's closer to monopoly gamer edition than any other type of monopoly you're ever going to look at um like i said the monopoly i think they just put the name on there because because it's, they, it's monopoly i don't know because they want to put the name on there essentially they could have removed the location cards and just had you going around the board taking damage and shooting each other. It would have been almost the same game, but hey, Monop or Hasbro's going to do what Hasbro's going to do. So I really enjoyed it, though. It's a fun little filler. If you know someone that loves Fortnite or loves Monopoly, eh, if they love Monopoly, maybe don't. If they love Fortnite, they're going to love this. Um, I I I'm excited to try this with my nephew. He's a huge Fortnite addict, and uh, I think he would really enjoy playing this game. So... Um, yeah, I give it two thumbs up. It's a fun, quick filler, easy to learn, easy to set up, tons of different characters that you can choose from. That was a great idea. I'm glad they didn't just include seven, so you always have to play the same seven people when you play the game. That was a that was a great idea. Um, the components aren't great, but the game's like twenty dollars, so what do you expect? Uh, but yeah, I recommend checking it out. It's a lot of fun. It'll make great Christmas presents for someone who loves Fortnite. Until next time, my name's Joe, and you've been watching Down the Vent. Bye!